That's one problem here, I think. The second problem, this is maybe just a question of temperament and style. Um, John's paper and David's response and much of our discussion is so, so textured historically and exegetically. It's so genealogical in its method. It's so rich in its responsive, its resonant responsiveness to the weight of the textual past that I'm puzzled by it. Why should one think like that? Why shouldn't one just think? Um, that is to say, what is at stake in these different modes of thought? The mode, one mode is this deeply resonant, textured, largely exegetical, deeply genealogical mode. Another method is, you can see it with purity in somebody like Wittgenstein, is a method that attempts to eschew any public acknowledgement of any predecessors and to exit into the ether of the abstract and just to think. I'm not here expressing a preference for one or the other, though since I can't do the first, I can only do the second. Um, but I do think there's something important at stake here. And it's a constant puzzle to me why people think in the way that John does. It's so puzzling that it seems alien and weird. But, um, but there it is. So th that's a problem too. Yeah. And John's very question began like that, by terms of recovery and stuff. Anyway, so, yeah. Um, should I say something now? Or? Oh, OK, sorry, Stephen Clark. Yeah. You know, just to respond quickly to Paul, I'm just like you, yeah, I just can't help it. I was a historian, and I've, I've stopped being a historian. So it's, um, but, and, and I do think there are, there, there are two valid ways, of a, but I think it's important that they're aware of each other. And I do think that Wittgenstein is not as interesting as people think because he ignores it. <laughs> and, and, uh, uh, and, and, uh, and, and this is why his reputation and influence is waning, because if you don't know about history, you're the victim of it. If you don't, you do, if you don't understand there's a history behind your words, um, you'll, be, you'll be the victim of that history and the way these words have been distorted and you'll fail to investigate certain assumptions. And because we, we are historical beings and live within contingency, we can't penetrate to the assumptions behind what we think in a purely uh, a priori, um, you, you know, isolated way. I'm 100% with people like Collingwood on this kind of point. And I think, for example, if you look at um, Wittgenstein's reflections on mathematics, he would realize that he was more in sympathy with Platonic thinking about mathematics and that Plato showed him a way out if he'd known anything at all about the platonic approach to mathematics, which has a strongly pragmatic component to it, of course. In fact, you know, it's exactly because Plato thinks that numbers are always numbering something um, that, that he says, because numbers number numbers, numbers must have a real objective existence. And you know, the fact that Wittgenstein doesn't know this kind of thing um, obviates the interest of his reflection on number, in my view. And that's just one example. Um, and there are many others. And finally, tri tripartition, um, absolutely. But I think this points, you can link that with what David is saying, that it's very paradoxical that in uh, Paul's tripartite anthropology, rooted in the Bible and the thinking about the heart, there's one sense in which spirit or heart um, integrates soul and body, and there's another sense in which it's higher, and therefore it's not just higher than body, it's also higher than soul uh, in, 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 the, in the normal sense. And, you know, and that lies behind what a lot of Christians call personalism, I think, as well. OK, time for one last <laughs> quick question. Oh, sorry, Paul. Oh, sorry. sorry. Sure. Uh, one quick. word on the intellectual Maybe. style question. I mean, I completely agree with you. There's great value in both styles. Um, but I do think that those who are too aware of history are likely to become its slave. Thought yeah, gets, that, that's a danger. Yeah. Thought gets derailed into exegesis very quickly. And yeah, we've absolutely. seen this around this table today, and it happens all the time. Yeah. That, that's the, that's the it becomes an endless prologue. I, I agree, well, that's so, the danger. So then, so then what we've got yeah. is asymptotes, Conceded. right? No, mm. Nobody can, as you say, mm. arrive at pure a priori cognition, of course, but one can asymptotically approach it. No one can arrive at pure historical knowledge either. One can asymptotically approach yeah. that. What we need is people who incarnate the best of each, I would think. Thank you, Paul. Last question. Yeah. Uh, 